Yo, what's up? What's happening? Welcome to Couch Comedy, a Bombs for Real production. <laughs> I, I like how that sounds. Um, for those of the y'all don't know, Bombs for Real is um, some I came up with to document my comedy journey. Uh, it's a play on uh, a Basquiat doc, uh, Boom for Real. It's about Basquiat's teenage years, his figuring it out years, and I'm really trying to figure out this whole comedy shit. So, along the way, uh, I uh, interview other comedians, um, I post a lot of my uh, open mic stuff, and uh, yeah, and I do these specials. Like You're going to see almost every single step of the journey. As I bomb my way to the top of uh, the comedy mountain, yeah, I call it bombs because fall in Iraq, so you know that you know bombs over Baghdad and shit. But yeah, uh, as I said before, I did uh, my first comedy special, I put it out on YouTube, uh, called it uh, "Silence Is Loud." Uh, that was cool, man. I had fun doing that one. Uh, just trying to trying to tell jokes in um, an empty room when it's just you and your dog. It's totally different. Uh, helps you uh, live in the silence. And uh, <laughs> this fine ass Aries that I'm fucking with, uh, she watched it and uh, told me she loved it and that she wanted more. I'm like, all right, I got you. I got you. But damn, I cannot wait till she break up with her boyfriend. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh man, I'm a petty ass nigga. Uh, the joys of being a Gemini with a Scorpio moon. Uh, yeah, but and of course my life has to have a tad bit of drama. Not too much because I am 41, but I need just enough uh, to kind of um, put a battery in my back, you know. So there's that. And all my fuckers about ain't you, you know, if y'all do get together, ain't you worried about getting cheated? You know, I'm like that shit really don't bother me, like. As long as you come in home to me, as long as you are up front and we have a conversation about what's going on, um, we can have fun. Um, but what I can't do is that whole sneaky behind your back shit, like for me. Um, yeah, because I mean, shit, I've been I've, the, the game is the game. I've I've done my share of cheating. Um, I've been cheated on um, shit to the point where my ex-wife had two kids with two other niggas. Well, two different niggas, yeah. And uh, my insurance paid for it. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll save that story for another day. Um, I'm glad I'm not too jaded over that. It'd be like that sometimes. But yeah, uh, this is how how this is gonna go is I'm just gonna tell some stories. Uh, I'm gonna tell some jokes in between, uh, all off the top top of the dome. Uh, no scripts, no writing. Um, I guess I'm. <laughs> There, there you know the comedy game is funny um there are beefs but the beefs aren't really out loud uh there's really no villains for real from what i've seen um i was like fuck it i'll, I'll take on that role. i'll be the i'll be the 50 cent of comedy uh because it's it, i don't know the shit gets kind of boring uh so uh, i guess I'll, I'll take on the writers man Cause just because they the ones that be acting like is the uh, end all be all to this shit um, the way the truth and the light is like you gotta sit down you gotta write your jokes you gotta write it out and you gotta have a notebook and this and that and I'm like come on dog uh, there are many ways to skin a cat there are many roads to the final destination um, and I, I just I mean it's not my fault that I could think of shit quicker than them cause I and like if that's what you do uh, cool, whatever. But it, it's it's the ones that are trying to like act like I'm wrong for for not writing and shit. Um, I, I had this uh, conversation. I was outside uh, the Laughing Library with some comedians, and we were talking about that. And, and they were all like, "Dave Chappelle writes," and I'm all like, "That nigga don't write. He got writers. Uh, all these motherfuckers got writers." And fortunate enough for me, I got a little writers' room in my head. And I I, I said, "I'm in my mind, I'm better than Dave Chappelle." And they looked at me like I had said the wildest shit ever. I'm like, this is how you should feel. Like all these comedians that people look up to, like I'm not impressed by at all. 
Um, I know somebody's going to bring this clip up later in my career, but no, I'm not impressed by them. All it is is consistency. Consistency, repetition. Um, I mean, there is, you know, an amount of being clever and stuff like that, but nobody is doing something Nobody's doing something extraordinary uh, from the other in my mind. That's how I see it. I'm like, everybody was like, oh, you should watch these specials. And I'm like, all right, I'll sit. And I'm literally, I'm, I'm bored. Um, I think somebody even told me to watch a Bill Cosby or listen to Bill Cosby special. And I tried, man. I was like, I was zoned out in less than five minutes. And he's supposed to be the GOAT uh, or one of the GOATs. Uh, maybe if anything, you know, Richard Pryor, you know, uh, I love Patrice O'Neal. I, I can sit down and watch that. At least deep his shit is cool. But for the most part, I, I just cannot sit down and watch an hour-long special without zoning out. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. Uh, as I said before, this, this is totally not scripted. If anything, I do have some topics that are sitting in a notebook right in front of me. Uh, you know, the studio ain't built like to where you can see uh, the coffee table. Uh, we're going to get there, though. But this list is hilarious. And we'll try to talk on, touch on all these topics. So I got gay, football, dating, CPS, and African porn. <laughs> oh, man, I could just open up with that. Uh, maybe I might do that at an at a open mic and just go through the topics that I'm going to get to. Um, and just, just roll them out in list order. Uh, yeah. Oh, but yeah, speaking of, I'm, I'm going to touch on some other comedy notes and then we'll get into it. But I did, um, I was going to, usually Monday nights I do Comedy Hype is Monday, uh, December 18th when I'm recording this. But they had, they got some roast going on and I don't know, I just, I'm tired, um, it's cold and I'm like, I just, I don't feel like being there for them to be roasting folks i could see if they were just doing a regular mic all right cool but anywho i um last week i did a mic at uh the laughing library at peter street station mic i usually go to on a regular basis um it's a very interesting mic because it's like literally like a roller coaster i'll i'll knock it out the park maybe two weeks in a row and then ugh, and the crowd is is very it's a black crowd it's a 420 friendly crowd so like it's just and then also too, as my mood goes, like this is how my sets go, and um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, I, I mean, I probably did I, right, but in my mind, to my standard, it wasn't hitting like I, uh, I thought it would. So I was in there talking about how uh, what was I talking about? Uh, I was talking about how uh, Kelsey shot Meg the Stallion. Yeah, Kelsey shot Meg the Stallion. Um, and I was kind of going into how I could have got Tory Lanes off on two out of the three charges. No, out of one of them three charges, but yeah, because he had a bad lawyer and just how women will shoot each other over the same dick. And then also, like, Kelsey was up on the stand talking about she couldn't recall. So I'm like, when have you ever known a woman not to remember something? And then, I uh, was the last part? Yeah, the fact that this nigga Tory is locked up already and Meg is still out here fighting on this lie. As good old Slim Charles from The Wire said, when it's a lie, you got to fight on that lie, but you still got to fight. Yeah, man, but Tory do need to do that time for having a bad lawyer and uh, trying to fuck three different women uh, without letting them all know what the deal was. That's pretty much what happened. And also, like... Just not letting the bodyguard handle the handle the business, man. What the fuck you got a bodyguard for if you're not gonna could take care of that stuff? <sighs> bruh, bruh. The things niggas do over pussy. I know I've 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 done some wild shit myself, like buy Beyonce tickets and uh, a full set of tires. Damn that hocus pocus bitch got me, but that pussy was fired. It'd be like that. Uh but yeah. Let's go ahead and get to the first topic of gay. And uh, it's the middle of the month already, and it's finna be a new month, a new year, and a new set of them bills, a new set of bills finna roll in. 
and airtime is rent paying time I wish I was more than 2% gay I wish I was at least like 20% gay and the reason why I say 2% gay because I let a nigga suck my dick a couple times um it's when I talked about it on stage <laughs> What time at the Laughing Library? Them niggas in there were perplexed because dudes, they be treating gay like the boogeyman. And I get it. I understand. I, I totally understand. Like, I really don't want to be around uh, some super gay niggas. Anyway, it's weird. Some weird shit. And it's like, I, I look at them like how white people look at black folks. Like, when it, it's too black, it's too ghetto, it's like, uh, keep this shit away from me, man. Um, but uh yeah because and i i i pose this question like are you really a bad bitch if you can't pull all the genders if you can't pull everybody on that alphabet list are you really a bad bitch ask yourself that uh (laughs) and it's pissing me off I can't at least be 20% gay because I I got niggas in my DMs. I got niggas on my OnlyFans that would that were willing to wash my dirty draws. Like them niggas is ready to lick my asshole after a hard day at work. I right, it's is that fucking crazy, man. And I just can't bring myself to do it. Um I think one of the things is I uh um I tested out the gayness a little bit too late in life, like in my 30s. Uh, the homie Ferg, he talks about, yeah, you got to do that shit early, man, so you can learn all the gay rules. And, um, yeah, I, I started too late. Cause, yeah, man, good old religion. And just um, the curiosity didn't hit me till yeah, to my 30s. It was weird. Well, actually, 26 is when I watched some gay porn. And I was like, oh, shit, I enjoy this. And then um, just like a lot of dudes... Uh, start questioning yourself sometimes and then you're like let me sweep this under the rug and then um, 2019 maybe 20 something like that the fucking faggot popped out and um, he was like hey you got some shit to figure out homie (sighs) yeah and I I learned from that situation uh, that a mouth is a mouth and that also, I do not know how women date us, cause I'm good. <laughs> and definitely, what kept me from crossing over to them burning sands is the fact that that whole religious piece. Like I literally, like after this nigga sucked my dick, I wanted to kill myself. Like I literally understand what people go through when they are um, questioning their sexuality and shit like that. Uh, so. Yeah, did I even mean to go in that far? Fuck it. I mean, I got to because uh, I ain't finna have nobody ex- try to expose me as I get up higher in this um, in this comedy journey. Uh, ain't nobody gonna try to throw out like how Isaiah Rashad, where he got on video uh, sucking dicks and shit. Yeah, nah, ain't finna happen to me, but. Yeah, I just, uh, I'm just like, fuck. Like, I could, I could literally, there is a nigga from my, uh, <laughs> my old deals, man, that want to take me on trips. And I'm like, nope, can't do it. Cause I, I like, I would be sitting there looking miserable. Literally, I did, um, I did comedy at Ship and Anchor. I think it's, yeah, out of San Francisco, Friends, what it is, whatever. And I saw this, um, I saw this young black dude. And this older white man. And they were sharing the menu. And I'm like, oh, I know what time it is, man. Them bills got to get paid. <laughs> and that dude looked so miserable, man. He was just look black dude was out looking on his phone the whole time. Like, damn, bless that, that young brother, man. Uh, I hate he got to do it. Uh, but, yeah. But uh, if you do want to admire my dick, uh, just hop on my OnlyFans and uh, leave some tips and shit. But that's about it. Because I'll be getting the messages and I just look at them. Maybe I need to hire uh, an assistant 
maybe I need to hire like a gay dude or a woman to answer uh, those messages for me because I don't want to do it. <laughs> if anything, you're going to get a thumbs up from me. Oh, man, oh, man. Uh, is that all we have for gay? I think so. Uh, let's move on to football. Uh, I should have researched this shit, but niggas don't be preparing. I saw that uh, somebody from the NFL got suspended uh, for like a head on collision. And I watched the video and it was one dude. He was like diving to catch. And then the defense dude, he ended up running, he ended up hitting him like the, the shoulder and then the head. And then they suspended that dude for the season. And I'm like, like I barely, like, being an artist already, I, I just, I'm not entertained. I, I, most of my entertainment is in my head or whatever I'm creating. Like, I don't, I barely watch football anymore. I used to watch a lot of football when I was in grad school, uh, when it was time to write a paper. So on that Sunday, uh, I used to spend the whole day uh, writing that paper and I would use uh, the, like I was like, all right, I need to have this many pages written uh, by uh, the first half. I need to have this many pages written by, um, excuse me, end of the game. And then, all right, so but and by the time I got to the Sunday night game, everything needed to be done because I was like, I'm not writing after this shit. Uh, but now I feel like I only watch football out of masculine obligation because the product is so watered down. The product is so stepped on. Uh, you can't even paralyze a nigga no more. Uh, I'm watching the pussification of football right before my eyes. And I'm just, I know Patrice O'Neill talked about it before, but it's like, it's literally happening. And I'm like, I blame women. I don't know, I, which is funny because they some killers, man. They be out here uh, having a baby holocaust. Um, yeah, but yeah, they got Taylor Swift up there, and it's just I just can't, I just can't watch it no more. I think if anything, I'm just gonna. I think that's gonna be on my new my new hobby is uh, I'm going to watch old football highlights. I'm gonna get NFL films or pull up on the YouTube and just watch old highlights. And that's an idea is formulated in my head for some content. Uh, yeah. Like when Demar, Ham I I was a little bit too excited when Demar Hamlin looked like he died on the field, man. <laughs> when he when he went to the upper room for a minute on there, I thought he was gone, man. I thought he was gone, and then he it brought back to life, back to reality, and I was, I was like, oh damn, this nigga didn't die. I, I come from the era. I one of my favorite hits of all time with the hit that retired Steve Young when Aeneas Williams and there is it it's a play that's burned into my memory it was the Cardinals versus the 49ers and Aeneas Williams came around the corner and you can look it up this is when I look forward to having extra things and they have the little stuff in the, up there and it's going to get better and they had the little video and stuff like that but just imagine or look it up on YouTube if they have it but Aeneas Williams coming around the corner come around the edge and he basically kills Steve Young and ends his career like bah gave him instant CTE yeah I miss I miss I miss that I miss those um those hospital balls uh they have uh legislated out the the going over the middle uh they have gentrified going over the middle of the field like how you had wide receivers that would take pride in going over the middle and you had cats like Ray Lewis that would knock their heads off, like loosen their necks. I used to used to be crime in them streets in the middle of the field. Now it's now it's not. It used to be the bluff in the bluff in Vine City. If you're from Atlanta or live in Atlanta, you already know what I'm talking about. That's what it used to be uh, in the middle of the field, and, and now it's um now it's um yeah, it used to be murder Kroger. Now it's white collar crime Kroger. Damn. Yeah, I can't, I can't. I just, I don't know. I don't even. We'll see I, if I even watch the Super Bowl anymore. And, uh, I just can't. I'm supposed to be performing at halftime. I don't know. But I'm trying not to get annoyed because I live in an apartment complex, and if they leave the, if somebody doesn't close the freaking 
outside gate door all the way the ringing goes and it's just literally annoying the fuck out of me and i want to strangle the fuck out of that person but we just gonna let it go and we'll try not to let it bother me too much uh moving right along uh dating uh <laughs> Uh, dating is interesting is being a comedian uh, yes my dating life does end up in my material I dated a Gemini uh, and I was like I don't know what you're talking about what you got going on why you gotta why you gotta bring up why you gotta bring that stuff up and uh, even I'm, I had a uh, um, I have a podcast uh, it's my journal like I, I do an audio journal and um, and I put it up as a podcast just to um, it's it's kind of one of the things where I can I can look back or I li- go listen back and see where I was, and I would talk and I would talk about our situation. And I'm like, why why can't you bring this up to me? And I was like, well, because it's it's just you, you be tripping. Uh, I'll be trying to tell you stuff, but you don't want to fucking listen to me, and you want to be like, well, I am how I am. It's just take it or leave it. So I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah, so I even I even stopped doing that for a little while just because I didn't feel like hearing a mouth. But never again. I will never. Nope. I'm a hey, whoever is with me. Um, I will try to. I want to be as real with you as I am on that journal because I feel like that's the realest I can be. Like there in the stage, uh, even more there because I don't have people in front of me. But I want to get to that point where I could be that real and raw in my relationships. Like it's. Close to 100% truth as possible. I'm, humans can't handle 100%, 100% truth, as I learned from Interstellar. So maybe like 95 to 98%, something like that, in my relationships. Um, I look forward to uh, having that because it's, you know, vulnerability is is very, very sexy. Um, and it leads to a lot of great sex. Uh, but yeah, uh, I feel like I had more to say about dating. I, I, I date like a, a lesbian woman. Uh, yeah, I used to be ready to move in. Within 90 days, I'd be so in love. Uh, shout out to my mom for not hugging me enough uh, growing up. Yeah, she's a she's a Capricorn and an accountant. That's why I'd be hooked on emotionally unavailable uh, black women. But uh, <laughs> even going back to talking about the gay stuff earlier, like, I'd be like, man, if I had a vagina... I would never be broke. I would never, and I wouldn't. Even, I would not even have to fuck these niggas. And also, if I had a vagina, like I would. Well, with that, I, I wish I had like a, a bag of vaginas, and every time I needed like a bill paid, I'm like, here goes some pussy. But then, the catch would be like I would only have, I would only be allotted so many vaginas. Either for the month or for the year, I haven't really thought that one all the way throughout. But then I had to like ration the pussy. Like I was like, oh fuck, I, I damn, <laughs> damn, I need to get this bill paid. But I, 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 I gave out too much pussy, man. Ran out of pussy. Yeah. funny to get inside a woman's head and like hear her inner dialogue on her you know her whether she gonna decide to fuck this dude because this man is real simple like she look good shit she ain't gotta look good can we even look at her all right shit a lot of these dudes like not even can i don't know like i'm i'm shallow i would have way more pussy on my resume if i weren't so shallow uh, I thank God for that. Um, I also can tell that I'm, I'm slowing down because uh, there was a day when, um, man, there was one time I fucked three different women in an eight hour period. Yeah. And now this year, um, this year 2023, I can. If I think a little bit hard, I can think about all the women I've had sex with this year. Uh, I want to say it's between five and seven. I didn't crack double digits this year. This, is, this has been a down year. 
It's been a down year. Um, <sighs> moving right along. Let's go ahead and get over to CPS. Yes, I worked at Child Protective Services uh, my first year and a half in grad school, and boy, I saw some shit. Um, one of the funniest cases I had was it was t- it was the baby daddy called a case in on the baby mama, and they was living together. It was two times this happened. And I, one of the times it was a white couple and the baby mama, she was like a party girl. She was wilding and the dude, he couldn't, he had to work and she was leaving the kids with him and he just couldn't, and they weren't, they weren't married. It was just like, yeah, they were just living together and he just couldn't take it. So he called it on her and I got the, it was like the report address and then the actual address. I was like, hold on, it's the same thing. I was like, oh man, I wanted to be like, look over her. Did you know that he called on you? Yeah, but one day he got fed up. He brought the kids up to the office and he was all like, I'm going to leave these kids here. And I was like, no, you're not because uh, I'm going to charge you with abandonment. And yeah, he took the kids with him. Uh, yeah, one time, <laughs> another time uh, I was uh, I got a case. Man, them custody cases used to get on my fucking nerves. He said, all them custody cases. Uh, yeah, one kid, like he, he tried to try to get, did he call? I don't know. He said something to get um, a case put on his mama because he wanted to live with his dad. And that's not even the funny part. Like right? He came, like, he came, uh, you know, I, I interviewed the kid and I, I looked at his shirt. And he had his uh, school shirt on and I'm like, hold on. I know that symbol and sure enough it was he went to the school uh and no his homeroom teacher was uh this one chick that I was knocking down before like I was fucking her the night that the Falcons blew the 28-3 lead yeah I was blowing her back out when they were blowing that lead and I was high on an edible and then I passed out and I woke up and I was like oh shit the Patriots came back and then I passed out again and I woke up. I was like, oh shit, fucking Falcons lost. I was like, what the fuck? Bruh. Uh, but yeah, working at CPS, I it made I didn't realize I didn't like realize that I was abused, physically abused until I worked there. Like, I had this one kid, he was uh, on the autism spectrum and shit, and his reading wasn't that great. And so his African mama beat his ass to the point where he bled through his pants and like put try to put salt on it. It's wild because his parents, like, they both worked at Morehouse School of Medicine. All the shit you see. Uh, but, yeah, when I when I had to do the investigation and we're doing, uh, like, had to take him to the police station and I like, had to take pictures. And, of course, the woman, she ended up pulling his pants down and I saw the scars. And I was like, ah, oh, man, it reminded me all them beatings I used to get. And I'm like, oh, shit. I was abused. Uh, but I'll take physical abuse over being molested, man. Yeah, I, I will. Like a grown man playing on my booty hole would like fuck me up for life. It would. So glad my Cub Scout leader died. <laughs> I know I talked about that before. Oh, that shit's hilarious, man. Oh, it sucks for my homie, who's it was his mom. But hey, I dodged that molestation bullet. Let me see. One, let me see one more dude, one more CPS case one I'm trying to think I'm trying to think of one trying to think of one trying to think of one. Oh yeah one time uh, one of the I had one of the moms she tried she wanted to fuck me uh, I got I got this case on her and like she lived she lived in section 8 apartment and it just was real section 8-ish over there like she looked like she had roaches and shit but um not the regular water bugs that you'll find in Georgia, but not she had like legit roaches. And I had to call her, I had to, I had to follow up, call her back. And I called her and she was clearly drunk. And she was all like, well, fuck. When you gonna, when you gonna take, when you gonna, uh, when you gonna visit again? Cause I'm, uh, yeah, I, I want, I want to fuck. And I was like, I'm like, woman, I got a case on you. Luckily, fortunately enough, I 
there wasn't enough there for me to like do anything more. I was like, close that shit so fast. So there's that. Um, we'll close that on this, man. <laughs> Oh man, I'll be watching some. My my porn search ain't too wild, but I can't. I really can't watch African porn. It's like I don't like Afrobeat and I don't like African porn. I think it's the white in me. But well, one I like old school African music, like the High Life, like Fela Kuti and shit. But that new that new Afrobeat, I'm I'm not I'm not feeling it. I'm sorry. I'm just not. Oh well, the world keep on spinning. But I can't watch African porn because, or can't enjoy it because they be wearing condoms. <laughs> I'm like, where is the risk, my brother? Where is the risk? Oh man, you you try to scam a nigga in America, but you don't want to fuck that whole uh, raw. I know. Like, come on, man. Like, is that still the stereotype? All them niggas in Africa got AIDS. Is that still the freaking stereotype? I just, I don't like, I don't like condoms in my sex, man. It just turns me the fuck off. I'm like, it could be a, it could be a wonderful scene. It could be like, it could be a fire scene. And I just, I, I just can't watch it. Like that condom just, I, that's how I be trying to tell like motherfuckers like be trying to say they like nobody's hundred percent straight. Like, bro, you why you're watching a dick doing some sexual shit. Man, but I just block out the, it's like nah nah nigga you see it you see that dick <laughs> speaking of dicks I can't watch I can't watch trans porn I tried to watch trans porn and it was just too much it was just too much <laughs> and like if you accidentally click on the trans porn I, all you gotta do is kind of scroll down a little bit on Pornhub and you'll know because it'll be just nothing but trans porn underneath and then you're like oh shit I'm watching trans porn it's just it's just like i just feel like trans people are the marsupials of humans and i feel like i tell trans jokes because um my um my roommate from iraq is trans shout out to um bell her name is jessica now yeah but like they're they're the there are the trans people trans when pre-op trans women are the marsupials uh, or not, I said marsupials. They are the platypus of people, man. It's just like, all right, it's a dick and some big old fake titties. Or one time I was doing an art piece with a trans man, and it was a vagina and then a hairy chest and then a beard. And I was like, wow, this is this is a wild shit. Um, yeah, doing trans jokes got me in trouble uh, early on in the year. Um, yeah, we gonna we gonna keep this thing under thirty five minutes. Uh, but, uh, I was doing, uh, comedy at Joe's coffee shop. Fuck Joe's. Uh, I bet people are like, let it go, let it go, let it go. I told y'all I am a Gemini with a Scorpio moon. I am double the petty baby. Uh, but yeah, I, I just, it was a, it was a white trans woman in there. It looked like Caitlyn Jenner. And I looked right over at her. I was like, hey, we got celebrity in the house. I was like, hey, it's Caitlyn Jenner. And she ain't like that shit. And I just went into how I was doing observational comedy about there's this uh, vagina civil war going on between cis and trans women, like the synthetic vaginas versus the organic vaginas. Um, and what else? And then, yeah, I could. My, it was it was I was bombing like a motherfucker, like si- the silent bomb. And then I just went in and talk about how trans men during their transition, they sound like they're going through puberty. <laughs> nobody takes them seriously because who the fuck really wants to be like be on paper being a man is real easy but once you start to dig through the weeds of that shit that shit is is, is rough dog you know what comes with being a man accountability yep and we straight men we we cis men don't like they try to make us care about trans men um like on on social media but like we really don't they i i don't know i don't view them as a threat like come on have fun being a man have fun have fun carrying the weight of uh being a provider and accountability and all that shit and nobody giving a fuck about your problems 
or your feelings. Shout out to African porn. Take off the condoms, please. Take off the condoms and oh fucking them wigs. All right, why do Africans like to wear those dry ass Mama Joyce wigs? Questions. We might answer them on another episode of um, Couch Comedy, but yeah, that's what this has been. Uh, y'all be great. Uh, if you would love to be a guest on Couch Comedy, I would try to make some room on the love seat. Uh, hit me up in my DMs. Uh, also, uh, subscribe uh, and tell a friend, tell a friend. And if you got triggered or offended, good. Because I don't give a fuck. You need to be triggered because we got to talk about this shit. And that's it.